When you're idling your engine and it's just sitting, it should heat up to the 12 o'clock position in about three to five minutes, and it should stay there, not go above it, not go below it. Even when you're driving, it shouldn't go below it. So if you want to check the temperature of your BMW precisely, then get an OBD2 to Bluetooth adapter. It's about $6. Plug it in underneath here. If your engine's running cold on the winter when you're on the highway with a lot of air flowing through here, then it's probably because the thermostat is stuck open, letting uh, coolant flow through your radiator like that. And then if you go drive slowly in rush hour, it might go ahead and heat up. That's because the uh, fluid's still flowing through here, but there's not a lot of airflow cooling it down. There's a lot of videos on YouTube to take the fan off and replace that already, so I'm not gonna make one, but I just wanna talk about the thermostat itself. When you replace your thermostat, you probably wanna flush the entire system as well. There's a drain plug for the engine block. It's down underneath cylinder two. And when you unplug that, make sure you have this all closed off. If you don't have that closed off, that's gonna come gushing out. So close those, unscrew that, and then slowly open the uh, bleed screw right there. Then you won't make such a big mess. Thermostats open using a center piston full of wax. When it melts, it becomes liquid, expands, and pushes the piston out. That's what opens the valve. And then the spring is what closes it. When it cools, the liquid condenses, turns to solid, decreases in volume, piston closes, and the spring is allowed to close the valve. The special thing about the BMW E46 thermostat is that it has the heater for the wax. So if the computer wants to open up this valve, all it has to do is apply 12 volts here. It's a 12 watt heater, and then it heats up the wax, melts it, expands it, and the piston opens. So when you lose the wax or the wax gets old and jammed, then that's when this fails to open and close because the wax doesn't allow it to close. So let's run this thing, test it out, see how it works. I'll plug it into 12 volts here and then I'll show you how it heats up and opens up the thermostat. So I've got it plugged in. I'll speed up the video so that you can see the thing open up quickly. So from this angle you can see that it's open pretty wide there and you see the stainless steel shaft and heater element right there. So the tip of it has the heater element in it, the rest of it is just a nice stainless steel shaft for it to slide up and down on. And that's what it creates the pressure against and pushes up on the valve, compressing that spring. So now I'm going to unplug the power and let it close back up. So now that it's cooled down, it's in the closed position, and this one actually closed all the way, but this one has failed before and stayed open, so it's definitely a unit that needs to be replaced, and I want to put this back in the car because it takes quite a bit of work to pop it out. If you're just going to pop it out and try to repair it, it's going to be a lot of work. So if you're going to pop it out, you might as well just replace it. If you do want to save the money, you could pop it out, take it apart, and clean it. And I can show you how to do that quickly. Uh, to do that, all you got to do is pop this off. Put your hand in front of it because there is some spring force. And that's it. it. Now it just comes off the shaft. And that's that heated shaft. So it's still kind of hot right now. The shaft and heater element has a little clip here. You just lift up on that clip, mine's broken off, and then you just pop that shaft off. If you want to test this out, just slide it in. Make sure it slides back and forth freely. There's kind of some waxy element in there that helps it slide around and expand. If you plug it in like this and plug in 12 volts and heat it up, it should pop right off. You should be careful when doing this because it could bind. Put something in front of it and behind it just so if it pops out it doesn't go flying everywhere. So as you see it popped out and some of that waxy element came out and spilled everywhere too. So I think if that wax gets old over time it just stops working and that's why you need to replace these. So to reassemble it you just put this back on. You can use a needle nose and put it on the floor, on a rug or something, and push down on this, and that will pop the clips back in. So once that's back in, just make sure the clips are fully engaged outwards, 
So you can push on them like that. And then this piece, the shaft and heater, just pushes in the back. And once you get it in enough, you can turn it and lock it into place. But it takes quite a bit of force to push down on and turn. So you could just kind of hammer it in and then turn it into place. That's how you test, take apart, and put back together your thermostat. So if you don't want to spend 150 bucks on it, you can take it apart, try to clean that shaft, maybe straighten it out if it's bent. Sometimes mine was actually bent when I got it out, so that's probably why it was failing. If you want to take the shaft out by itself, it's kind of hard to pull on, but you can just pry on this and it'll come out. So if you want to bend it back to shape, you can wrap it in a rag so that you don't uh, mar the surface. Clap it into a vise and then slowly bend it back into shape. Once you've got it straight, you can put it back in, test it out, and make sure it works. Lock it in place and test it out again. So when the E46 is idling or driving on the highway at high speeds, it should maintain a temperature right in the middle like that. I think that's 98 degrees Celsius and the thermostat opens up at that temperature, cools down the engine and the radiator has a pretty good cooling capacity so if it goes above that it can cool it down pretty quickly right to that 12 o'clock position, 98 degrees. And if it goes below that temperature, it should close the thermostat, keep all the heat inside the engine and keep the engine at operating temperature. The engine works well at this temperature because it boils off all that moisture inside the engine and it doesn't allow the engine oil to get all sludgy because of the moisture and break it all down. If your engine's running below that on the highway because the thermostat's stuck open, it's going to create other issues and the only side effect is not just no heat. It's going to cause sludging of your engine oil that'll lead to other problems and you don't want any of that. So if your temperature is going lower than this, definitely replace your thermostat right away. If it's going above that, definitely get that checked out and it could be the thermostat, it could be other issues as well. It's a $100 part online and it does take about three or four hours to take apart. You need a 32 millimeter wrench and you should have a thing to hold that fan clutch still. To get the fan out, all I had to do was take a 32 millimeter wrench and hammer it in the clockwise direction to get it off and then I hammered it back in the counterclockwise direction to get it back on. Some people use a fan clutch bar to hold it in place but if you don't have that you don't really need it because the pulleys have enough inertia for you to hammer on that nut the 32 millimeter nut and get that fan loosened up so you can spin it off and it does have enough inertia for you to tighten it back on it's important to note that the fan is put on with reverse threads so you got to turn it clockwise to unscrew the fan so if you want to check the temperature of your bmw precisely then get an obd2 to bluetooth adapter it's about six dollars Plug it in underneath here. Once you turn on the engine, it should connect to it. So now we're on the highway and it's staying at 84. It's staying at 12 o'clock. When the thermostat was stuck open, it would decrease the temperature and get pretty crappy. So after all that driving, we've seen a range that it goes up and down from. Now we're going to let it idle for about 5 minutes and see what it rests at. So it was just at 94, it's gone down to 93. We'll see where it ends up being. And the whole time it's shown it right in the middle, but there's some buffer so it doesn't show you that it fluctuates up and down too much. It's gone from 94 and 93 back up to 94. 94 and 95 degrees must be the optimal coolant temperature at the optimal running temperature of the engine. So if your thermostat's working properly, it should range between 93 and 95, if you're, even if you're driving or when you're idled. If it's going much below that or much above that, definitely get it checked out, flush the system, replace your thermostat. That's a basic routine maintenance if your thermostat's old. So definitely try that if your cooling system is going too low or too high. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Maybe I can answer them or somebody else can answer them. But definitely someone out there will know the answer. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps.